What's up folks and welcome back to the channel. That's Gary's Cutlass. Back up alive. What has it been, about a year and a half since the fire? This is the first time he's fired it up. It's not gonna be very good for my video. <laughs> but today, but today we are building an upgraded battery box for the kayaks. All right, so we're definitely gonna have to deal with the cutlass noise today. They just got the thing fired up for the first time. It's like half a crank, blap, blap. Uh, open headers over there, so we're gonna have a little bit of a different background noise today. So for about the last three years, I've been using this battery box right here. Started out with a 10 amp, 12 volt uh, SLA sealed lead acid battery and uh, went over to the Kepworth uh, 10 amp 12 volt uh, lithium polymer battery, which is about half the weight as the SLA battery. Now what I use this battery pack for is for uh, the lighting and powering the cameras over the course of a day on the kayak so, I don't, so I'm not having to constantly switch out batteries and whatnot. This has always served me very well, but there's a reason that I need to upgrade this. The 10 amp hour battery is not quite getting through the day with the new GoPro 12s. Uh, one of the things that I did is I swapped out the sockets that they plug into to pretty much allow the cameras to take as much power as they possibly want. And the 12s with uh, slightly higher resolutions, HDR, are asking for it. So this sucker's only been getting me through about uh, six hours or so with the cameras in hindsight so you don't miss any of the hook sets that's not going to do it so we are upgrading 10 amp hour times two in parallel we'll have 12 volt 20 amp hour so really only double the weight and this whole setup is only going to be about the same weight as the original sealed lead acid that was in here. So let's get on it. Uh, got some work to do before the sun goes down. And then we gotta test it, make sure everything's copacetic. Let's get on this. All right, so here we have a drift dry box. Uh, they got from Walmart, I believe it's $25. It has this little thing down in here, which I don't think we need. So we're just gonna pull that straight out. In fact, it might be a little bit of a hindrance to the final project. These 12 volt 10 ampers fit in here pretty perfectly. If you do them like yay, and even more so if you, my bad, do them like yay. And we're gonna dual lock them to the bottom once we are done with our wiring and whatnot. That actually looks pretty good. This is the device that I'm using. Ooh, there's a part missing from this thing, bastards. So this is the port that I'm gonna be using. It fits between the batteries just fine, but there's, I'm also gonna be doing a USB port right off of this guy for charging other things uh, separately like phones, laptops, and whatnot. Oh, there it is, cool. So the batteries themselves, I gotta figure out exactly how I'm going to align them. First, standing up isn't gonna work. Nah, it's too tight. So side by side it is. Actually, we got plenty of room for the devices, so I don't need to be so concerned about that. So, cool. This is a fresh, ad hoc, on-the-fly build, and we're going to treat it as such. This has a no nice rubberized setup here, so once I drill the hole for it, I'm going to put it off to one side a little bit. 
shouldn't have any depth problems or anything like that. So first thing we're gonna do is deal with the electric. Pull the batteries out of here. Not quite there, but it'll get us started. Close this guy up. Test our size. It's gonna be too small, I'm sure. Okay, so we're about a step too small. Change out my unibit. One more should do it. All right, we're looking pretty good. All right, let's do pilots. And then, oddly enough, it comes with <laughs> drywall screws, but uh, that should be fine. Getting those driven most of the way. We'll uh, hand tighten them later so the plastic doesn't crack. Our power plug is in. This is what's gonna be that this is gonna be what goes to the kayak. Just gonna pigtail off from one battery to the other. Let's go ahead and get that set up. These shouldn't be too long. Up to eight, let's check it. That should be just fine. Crimp this bad boy. I've only got red, so I'm gonna heat shrink the rest of the distance on this one. Okay, two more of these bad boys. Well, let me make sure the heat shrink fits through those. It does not. All right, so I'll do a little surgery to these. There it goes. God. <laughs> He's all right. There's our two contacts. Let's go ahead and crimp these guys. And a lot may ask, why am I not soldering these straight to the post to make a more reliable connection? And that's because you sometimes have problems out in the field and you need to be able to quick disconnect things. That's it, that's the answer. And again, the only reason that I'm doing this is just to make the black and red a little more pretty. Next step is gonna be a fuse holder. Just gonna mark that like yay. Do these with uh, straight blue butts. Right. Hey, to take it easy. Uh, for obvious reasons, we're in water. Uh, gotta have this system fused, especially since it's LiPo. And uh, could very easily catch fire if it wasn't. So there we go. I gotta remember to get a, like a seven and a half amp fuse. All right, I think we're good there. So I am going to get on heat shrinking and put some of this stuff away. All right, let's get on these bad boys. All 
Uh -huh. Almost there. One more. All right, cool. So we're gonna lay these guys down in here. Actually, we're not. All that. And install that. Okay. And then this guy. Negative, and this guy to this negative. All right, I think we are good. Fold that into place, tuck that down. It should be good, aside from cleaning this thing up and battening the batteries down. So what happens from there That this one may or may not be long enough. And to, just goes to this guy. Depending on how the polarity plays out there, I've got the kayak set up a particular way. I actually got them all pretty much set up the same way. Uh, we've got a gender bender, what we, what we call gender benders in the uh, low voltage field that'll that'll swap the polarity when you plug it into the other side if necessary so let's uh see what happens with that so let's go ahead and pull the kayak off the roof uh, see how everything's running and we'll go from there Take this over here so you guys can see what's going on. All right, fuse. So far, so good. Nothing popped. All right. Fits in there nicely. Let's see if we fire up right away. I kind of get the sense that we're not going to. Nope. All right. Let's go gender bender. And there we go. We have power. We have 13.2 volts. We got lights. We've got camera ports. We got it all. Heck yeah, there we go. All right, we got power. And we've got video. Cool. Let's uh, toss this camera where it belongs and go from there. All right. We're good to go, looks like. There's uh, one of our ports right there. The front, port back here for the back, which this camera's on. Everything is batteryless. There's that guy right there. This camera sits up here. I know that some of you have not seen this setup. It sits up there like EA. 
and that's how we get the views that I show y'all. Holy smokes, man. Man, that's one of the easiest big fish catches I've ever done. Oh my goodness. Look at this. That's another freaking tank, man. <laughs> anyway, folks, I think we are good. Nice build. Just got to clean up the dry box, dual lock the batteries to the bottom, and we're done. If anybody has any questions about the wiring or anything, just let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next one.